this is the advanced IT project tracking. So while we still have the three up here, many clients expand that. The budgetary items have been massively expanded. We've added a project portfolio component to this. One of the things we've done is to tie this into project types. So we have clients that do facilities projects as well as IT projects. We'll stick a project manager on this for now. Is for the purposes of demand and capacity, what's the percentage that we're going to allocate them to this project? How many hours per week? And start to date and end date of the resource for the project as a whole. This is very, very baseline. We have another piece that we can add as a map and then we can remove this piece that actually is a project task. So rather than using the out-of-the-box tasks, it's actually a unique project task that can be a milestone, can be a gate, can be all kinds of different things. And what it does is it has start times and, end, and start dates and end dates, estimated total effort, and then you can link multiple resources to it, which then all rolls up to that demand and capacity. So what's our demand for this project? and then what's our capacity. And as you link those resources into the, the task, you can say link a resource, but you don't know whom it is. All you know is that it, it's a particular type of resource. We've done things like a change control. So change controls are pretty basic. It's not a change request, it's a change control for a project. Either we're changing requirements, changing budgets, whatever it may be that may go against the project. This is something that gets adapted pretty heavily because each customer's process is very unique. Of course, we can tie in incidents requests, change requests, and for one of our customers that does release management, they tie their releases into projects as well. Meeting minutes, the meeting minutes you see in the, in the uh, Sharewell version of ITPT was taken from the meeting minutes we put in to, to our advanced ITPT to begin with. We allowed them, they said, oh, this would be something that everybody would want the capability to do. So we said, well, steal it, stick it in basic IP, ITPT. But this is a little bit more elaborate. We can email all the minutes out, do all sorts of different things. Cost items drive all of our costs up here. We have risks and issues. We expanded this out a little bit so that for a risk, you can actually do risk calculations. For a recent project we did, risks and issues were separate. And a risk can be escalated to be an issue, but an issue doesn't get dumbed down to become a risk. That's part of their PMO process. They treat them separately. The activity schedule is generated automatically. This is to kind of mimic a project flow, start and end dates and gates, et cetera. And this data is designed so that it can be output to an Excel mergeable file that creates something that looks like a Gantt chart. For one of our clients, they have a high level requirements definitions and then you tie detailed requirements into each of the high levels. There could be five requirements to match requirement one for high-level requirements, and then the, the detailed requirements. They were managing those on spreadsheets. My feedback to them was, remember, Sharewell, you can't interact with the grid like you can in Excel and type stuff into the cells. And they said, actually, that's probably better because it slows the process down a little bit because so many things get missed as they're moving really, really quickly through requirements gathering. It ties everything up and lets everything roll up, and it's all in one system. So then it becomes outputable. You can create an output format for that to go into if it needs to be emailed or put into a report or whatever it may be that needs to go out for validation. Really what we found as they started using it was what they're actually doing is when they do their requirements validation meetings, they go through and we added some fields to just say, hey, the requirement's validated. Who was it validated by if from the process owner perspective? Do the requirements right on shareable screen, right? Just bring this up. As you, as you would anything that is grid-based, and they just pound through them because it's all one to many. So we put project charters, we put scopes, depending upon the customer's particular PMO process. This is where we've kind of had the challenge because we'll, we'll have something in it. They go, oh, we don't do charters that way. Our charters are buried in these three other things. Okay, well, <laughs> if you wanted to do a project charter, and really what it is is taking a lot of things that are disparate documents that maybe sit in a SharePoint site, or sit on a, on a network share and there's the, the charter and there's the this and the scope and the requirements document and these 10 or 15 different files, getting them all into one place that's now in a database so it's indexed and searchable and it's outputable into a single format. If you wanted to have a scope document that included the requirements, you could do that. Where now they just email the two attachments and there's no tracking for who's changing what, when do you lock down the files and 
all those sort of things. They're all things that can be controlled in a single platform. And then tying it to incidents and changes and releases and all those other good things are wonderful things that you're able to do. We did a couple things with questionnaires here. So we, with permission, kind of kept the piece in here from one of the clients that we, we built it for. They have a technical response questionnaire that they send out to the vendors for when they're spinning up a new project. And this was just a, a big Word document that got bounced all over the place. And so what we did is we used ShareWell's web forms. So this can get emailed out to the vendor and they get sent a link uh, and they have their web forms exposed in their DMZ and the vendor comes in and can fill in this form. And they see it and then once they gate the project out, it'll lock this form down and the vendor can't come in and edit it any further. But the vendor can send that link around. So if you were to contact John and John can fill out only half of it but he needs to send it to me for technical stuff, I am actually accessing the same form that he's using. We're not passing back and forth some sort of Word document that we can get out of version on. So it's just, just a neat use of some of ShareWell's capabilities. Same with the client sponsor questionnaire that they use as part of their PMO process. Just, it gives everybody food for thought and they go, okay, we don't need it, we don't need it. We just remove the tabs from the screen and leave the object sitting in the system so they could be leveraged later. We left the classification piece in here from Sam Houston State just because it gives an example of where we might answer questions within a project as the PMO is going through, does this need a project manager, what's the size of the project, we can do all the calculations and waiting. It's just a good example of some of the cool stuff that you can do with ShareWorks.